Welcome to the week one lecture of uh, interoperability for emergency managers. It's important to note at the outset what is meant by interoperability in the context of emergency management and specifically within this course. A common use of the term interoperability is a reference to infrastructure and hardware, specifically as it relates to radio communications. It's not wrong to refer to interoperability in this regard, but interoperability in the larger context of emergency management has a much broader application. Interoperability is the ability to make disparate systems, organizations, and people work together during crises. Integral to making interoperability possible within emergency management and with the public at large is the ability to effectively communicate. Interoperability relies heavily on the exchange and use of information among large, heterogeneous networks of people. This means that interoperability is separated into two general categories, equipment and people. If we do not have the infrastructure in place, communication is dead before it starts, and without communication, interoperability is impossible. I have here a couple of quotes from the 9-11 Commission report. And uh, you'll notice here, like in the first quote, it says, the radio's effectiveness was drastically reduced in the high-rise environment, and some firefighters were on the wrong channel or simply lacked radios altogether. And the second quote uh, there, it, it says that the FDNY is trying to address its radio deficiencies, and then down below there, um, as far as the Port Authority police, most of them lacked access to the radio channel uh, on which uh, the police evacuation order was given. So the report, re uh, the report reveals that there were clear gaps in communication that were directly related to equipment failures. You know, the radios were ineffective inside the building, one of the channels was overwhelmed, operators were on the wrong channel. Um, obviously that's operator error, but technology can actually overcome that problem now and uh, there was a lack of access to the appropriate channels or integration. So all of these issues can be overcome with contemporary communications technology. <clears throat> More often than not, interoperability failures are a people problem, not an equipment failure. In fact, if the proper people preparations have been made, many of the problems that are inherent to equipment and you know, often unavoidable serve as a mere speed bump to successful interoperability and are not catastrophic barriers. So returning to the example of 9-11, there were numerous public safety entities that worked together, that were by nature interdependent, that found a way to communicate effectively enough to save tens of thousands of people. FDNY, NYPD, Port Authority Police, EMTs all put themselves in harm's way to work together to save others. Joe Pfeiffer, a first responder and captain for FDNY at the time of the attack, spoke to my graduate class. He recounted how one of the first things he and the other first responders with him had to do after the towers came down around him was to identify a safe evacuation route. Specifically, they needed a route that kept citizens safe from falling debris and, sadly, protected them from the 200 people that had jumped from the floors above them. My point is this, successful, effective interoperability is getting equipment and people to work together to accomplish something bigger than themselves. That's why I'm in the business I'm in, and I suspect it has something to do with your decision to participate in emergency management. Much has changed over time, and it seems that it continues to evolve at an increasingly rapid rate. What we might even classify as equipment has transformed. The change in something as straightforward as the logistics of how information is delivered has revolutionized how the public expects to get information, our ability to disseminate information, and even who produces and consumes information. Today's world is truly about information sharing. Major television networks or long-standing news outlets do not have the corner on the market for all relevant information in contemporary American culture. I would speculate that you were just as likely to listen to an account of an event uploaded to YouTube by a citizen of your community 
as you would an interview that was professionally recorded, edited, and broadcast by a local news station. For that matter, you may even give the account more credit because it was not handled by a journalist. This class is about enhancing connectivity with other organizations within emergency management and with the public. Common sense would tell us that the best strategy for emergency managers is to leverage every resource available to successfully mitigate, prepare for, respond to, and recover from an emergency. The more effectively we leverage these resources, the more interconnected we become. Being interconnected, being networked, being interdependent is interoperability. Turning to the first chapter of our text, we can see that there are five assumptions that make up an effective communication strategy. I'll briefly touch on each of them. The first there was customer focus, and you'll see that's broken down into two different categories, internal customers and external customers. So internal, there being staff, you know, other agencies, different emergency managers and disaster partners, and then our external customers elected officials, business leaders, media, and the general public. So customer, or uh, as I have noted up there, citizen focus is my preference. Um, so the, the first of five is this customer focus requires a healthy view of prioritization. We know that operating with other organizations to manage emergencies means putting the needs of others above our own. I mean, that's 101 material to the emergency management world. However, perhaps an even better way to view the general public is to think of them as citizens in lieu of customers. The term customers carries with it quite a bit of baggage. I mean, who hasn't heard of the phrase, the customer is always right? As it relates to emergency management, the customer in this case is not always right. The customer comes first in the sense that we put them ahead of our personal self-interest, but it does not mean that each person is going to get exactly what they want. For that matter, in many cases, there's not a good option for them to, you know, take their business elsewhere. So this means instead that we serve citizens. It means that we have a set of shared values with the community we serve as a whole. Citizens have a vested interest in seeing us succeed every bit as much as we, in emergency management, have that interest. This means they bear some responsibility in making that happen. Again, I'm trying to shape your thinking about interoperability. It's not good enough that we have the answers and are able to tell people what to do. We must work alongside and in conjunction with our citizens if we're going to succeed. Our communication strategy must be responsive and informative. This means we need to provide timely and useful communication. Helpful information that is delivered late is as useless as rapidly delivering information that's wrong or unhelpful. And treating people like citizens means we help manage their expectations. Providing realistic information may be difficult in the short term, but you will be able to work with others more effectively over the long run. It will keep your integrity intact, and frankly, it will keep you from the embarrassing task of admitting you oversold and underdelivered. Leadership Commitment Interoperability is only possible if it is a priority from the top down. When the most influential leaders make communication among all the stakeholders a primary concern, it changes the shape of the response and recovery effort. Leaders must model this behavior among staff, partners, and the public. Succeeding at implementing an effective communication strategy means that an intentional effort must be made to include assigned communication staff to every part of the planning and operations process. Ideally, a communication specialist would be embedded in the senior management of the responsible organization. The needs of customers are best handled when they are considered as operational decisions are being made. Keep all of this in context, in, in context of serving as an emergency manager. If you are an emergency manager and are participating for a major event, say a 4th of July celebration, and you know it will involve the police department, the fire department, public works, streets, maybe parks and rec personnel, and probably some private organizations such as a local church and many others. 
This is inter interoperability in action. As an emergency manager, you are a coordinator in this process. It's unlikely that you'll be running the entire event, but you have an important voice. As the planning process for such an event begins, this would be an excellent opportunity to involve a dedicated member of the city's communication staff. A suggestion just like this is what makes emergency managers valuables, valuable because they are tasked with thinking about the big picture. Consider for a moment a real life example. I was responsible for commanding a half marathon in Gilbert, Arizona that ended with a festival and a fair. Involved in the preparation for the event were all of the players I listed on the last slide and many others. There were private barricade companies, a race director, food vendors, etc. We utilized the All Hazards Incident Management Team model to plan the events. There was extensive representation throughout the process as the big day approached. Even the founder of the race, who had hosted several other running events across the state, was impressed with the level of coordination that we demonstrated. It was undeniable that the event was going to be a complete success. However, I failed to include a dedicated communications specialist. The day of the event arrived and, with the exception of a few minor obstacles, it went off without a hitch. Well, almost. Due to the route, we experienced greater levels of vehicle traffic problems than were anticipated. As we began to make logistical decisions on how to quickly solve the problems, we realized we had no efficient way of communicating those solutions to the public. Motorists were becoming increasingly impatient and were calling the police department to let us know. Officers that were manning the street closures were frustrated as well as they did not feel like they had good answers to communicate to the, to the discontented motorists. The third is situational awareness. Our text has this to say about situational awareness. The collection, analysis, and dissemination of information about the disaster site are the basis for an effective communications operation in a disaster response. So if we're going to be able to work with any level of effectiveness with our customers and citizens, we have to have a handle on what is going on. This seems very basic, but emergency management personnel have mucked this up in the past. Look at some uh, quotes here from a U.S. Senate report on Hurricane Katrina from 2005. Um, listing some of their findings here. The Homeland Security Operations Center failed to take timely steps to create a system to identify and acquire all available relevant information. And they failed in its responsibility to provide general situational awareness. Additionally, uh, Department of Homeland Security officials were not aware of the crisis until after the uh, day after landfall. Louisiana was not equipped to process the volume of information. And then the last one there, there was a lack of situational awareness regarding, you know, status of deliveries, creative difficulties, etc. So clearly, no emergency manager is capable of facilitating interoperability when they do not have a grasp of the scope of the problem. Situational awareness in a communication strategy includes collection of information, analysis of the information, and dissemination of the information. We cannot solve problems effectively by shutting ourselves in a room. We must be responsive to our customers so that we have the information we need to analyze and then the ability to communicate those solutions back to them. The final of the five assumptions is media partnership. For an effective communication strategy, Emergency managers not only need to have in-house communications personnel on staff, they must have a quality working relationship with outside media. They have to be aware that the media serves customers as well as they are. They have to be aware that the media serves customers as well and they are not beholden to us. The increase uh, to increase interoperability with the media, it's important you enter the relationship recognizing that they have needs of their own. We cannot ignore them completely, nor expect them to report on exactly what we want and nothing more. A healthy relationship with the media is a tricky balance, but well worth the effort if that balance is struck effectively, no matter who you are. So stay classy.